Hello YouTube, this is another video from Super Apple Forever. This video is going to uh, be another Mac tutorial showing how to use Front Row. Uh, Front Row is a uh, program that has kind of like a user interface of an iPod on Mac. Now there's two ways to do it. You can either do it with the Mac remote that came with your Mac. I'm not sure if they come with the new Macs, but I know it came with mine. The new ones are aluminum and the old ones are white. They look kind of like the first generation iPod Shuffle, except a little bit wider. Um, there's two ways, like I said, to open this. First um, of all, you could go to your application. It's right here. Or the other way is to press the menu on the remote. Um, I did post this video, yes, a few days ago, and um, the audio was turned off because I had copyrighted stuff on here. On, uh, I played copyrighted video, so I'll try not to do that again, and um, hopefully it won't be taken down. Um, so, here it is. Like I said, it's kind of like an iPod user interface. You have movies, TV shows, music, podcasts, photos, settings, sources. Um, so, first we'll look at movies. And, um, okay, so, here we'll look at, um, a Computer Chronicles episode, um, let me find one, okay, um, if you want to know what, uh, Computer Chronicles are, you can, uh, I made a video called Cool Websites or something, you can check that out, because this is a really cool series. So to press uh, to play it, uh, you press the play button on your remote, and it starts playing. You can either uh, resume playing if you've watched it before. Let's start from the beginning. If I say the word Apple, you say the word Macintosh. But if I had played the same game just a few years ago and said Apple, you would probably say 2 or 2E or 2 Plus, for it was the Apple II that started um, this company. But with the recent the success of the Macintosh and the Mac II in particular, now. there have been rumors that the old Apple II was, was headed for the too. orphanage. Not so, for there's a new Apple IIc um, and a new so this is in a Apple II GS. Today we take a look at the new generation of Apple II computers on this edition of the com so, yeah, Computer Chronicles. Thing. Before they thought about cases for computers, this guy put it into... ...scattered around the world. But company yeah, but support... Okay, so that's movies. Um, TV shows pretty much the same thing. And again, I'll try to play something that's not copyrighted if I can find something. Um, okay, here, I'll just do some chronicles again. Um, yeah, same Provided by Upstream. Right, here we've taken a look at all the um, TV shows. Um, podcast. Um, so here's, here's a podcast. I'll do an Apple quick tip. Um. Um, if it's a video podcast, same Adding thing. items to the dock in Mac OS X is easy. Just drag and drop the items where you want them. Here's another way to add items to your dock. First, here's the traditional... Oh, traditional way of adding an item to the dock. I'll select it, then drag, and drop it right where I want it. Now let's say we find ourselves using TextEdit frequently and want to have it in our dock. You can see that TextEdit is not in the dock right now. When I launch it, it appears right here, but will disappear after I quit the application. However, while the application is running, all That's I need to do is right-click on the icon in the dock and select There's Keep in Dock. No That's in, oh no, no, that kind of old. Yeah, they still are using that. Cause, okay. Um, so let me find an audio podcast if I have any. This day in Apple history, a daily podcast presented by AppleMatters.com. June 8, 1984, Thunderscan. In the early days of the Mac, things that seem positively cheap today were prohibitively expensive. Scanners, for example. Luckily for Mac users, a clever company managed to provide a low-cost scanning solution for the Mac. The product was called Thunderscan, 
high-resolution digitizer from Macintosh, and it worked by leveraging a piece of hardware most Mac owners already owned. The hardware? A lowly dot matrix printer known as the Image Writer. By replacing the print heads with a piece of hardware capable of scanning, users could import a wide variety of documents into their Macs. The solution was slow because the Image Writer was none too fast, but the Thunderscan's great output, combined with its low cost, made... So yeah, that's podcast, um, photos, um, that's photos, you know, just like your photos, settings, stuff like that, um, sources, uh, if you have other computers, um, you can do this too, it'll have all your computers that have stuff on it, and you can, uh, view stuff on that computer, it's kind of like Apple TV, I guess, I've never used Apple TV, but I, I think it's similar to that, so, um, Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about Front Row, please feel free to ask me. Um, either in the comments or on a private message, either one's fine. I can usually, usually answer questions pretty quickly. So thanks for watching. Um, please like and please subscribe. Oh, and by the way, um, please don't flag this video or take it down. Because it happened to me the first time I uploaded it. And, um, yeah, so thanks for watching.